Alright, this is Flying McGuffin, and welcome to Let's Play Victoria 2. I think I finally finished the mod to my satisfaction. Um, I thought it was taking too long to do a lot of things, so it's probably a bit less polished than I was hoping it would be. But uh, I think I got everything in place uh, that will let us do stuff. So, we are going to be playing as the Persian Republic. You can see I did a little bit of uh, testing off screen to do stuff. So, let's jump into the game. If you are unfamiliar with the what I'm doing, it is a mega game, uh, or a grand campaign, however you want to say it, which is, uh, I'm basically taking a game that I started in Crusader Kings 2, and I'm going through all of the current Paradox games until Hearts of Iron. Uh, I skipped, well, some people might use Heart March of the Eagles, and I, I, <clears throat> I was given suggestions to do that. But I didn't think it was really, um, I don't even have that game, so, uh, I didn't decide to do that. So, if you're wondering about the situation in the world, just look at my EU4, the last thing of my EU4 game. If you skip that part, or if you just, just completely new to the thing and you're more of a fan of Victoria than the other parts of the Paradox games, um, then you will, uh, You'll figure out what's going on based on that if you if you go and look at that. So, um, the situation is is mostly how it is at the end of EU four. And let me explain for people who are new to the stuff. Um, we were P Zoroastrian uh, Persia, the Karen people, who started about here and became the Persian Empire and fought off the Mongols and all kinds of stuff. So. Um, and you might see the Immortals up here and think, well, that's a that's a Zoroastrian thing, and you'd be right. And uh, we managed to convert one of the Russian states up here, Perm, I believe, and they became they converted to Zoroastrian, and then most of the people around them converted to Zoroastrian. At one point, all the way up into Finland was was Zoroastrian, but the uh, Christian powers um, fought back. So it's pretty much just. Everything like Muscovy is uh, is Zoroastrian. Everything like this is Zoroastrian. And then, at one time we had Greece. At one time we had North Africa. And the Alpuricids are still Zoroastrian. Um, and Egypt and Arabia are also Zoroastrian. So I think, in terms of population, we've been losing, uh, but. In terms of land, we've been winning, at least in the east, because the immortals colonized everything, uh, which they didn't do to the end of the game, so they they lost out on some of the eastern stuff. Oh, something else of note is that we have Vinland here, who's basically the Union parts of the United States, east of the Mississippi, and uh, most of British Canada, plus some. Uh, stuff here. Now you notice I filled in the middle of this and that's because I, I'm i expecting most of these places to be minor powers through most of the game. Texas was Spanish Louisiana so I just decided Texas was a better name. Um, and it was already included part of the land so it was, it was pretty convenient actually. And most of these are Spanish colonies here so they're pretty much the same names. Florida includes quite a bit of what will later be the Confederacy, the Dutch owned Florida. This I think was also Dutch, um, but it's just the California Republic. Most of these are changed to their appropriate um, culture for the, like these are mostly Yankee and Vinland is primary, primary uh, Yankee culture <clears throat> and they accept French Canadians and Anglo Canadians. I didn't bother to change that because I guess because I was super lazy. I, that's the only explanation I can give. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. But they are a successor state of Iceland, um, who are Norse. They're Norse. And, um... So, I decided the only thing I was going to change about Pops was the religions. And so Vinland has Norse religion, and we have Zoroastrian. And... Um, I actually did bother to go in and change stuff with that stuff. 
So let's actually start with population then. These things at the top of the screen can basically show you different pl things to focus on. And you'll see right away that we have a problem. You'll notice that, well, Zoroastrian is on the list, but it's number three. And that's because of India. You can see here, Pashtunistan, Uzbekia, quite a bit of people. Kandahar, you know, Tabriz, Aleppo. These are all places that are, you know, parts of our empire. Where our capital is actually in Baghdad. You can see it doesn't have that many people compared to a lot of places. Um, and then we start going down here. And then we see two million people in Bundelkhand. Two million people in... I uh, would do how you pronounce that. Pronounce that. United Provinces, two million. Rajputana, 1.5. Etc. Etc. Even West Java has almost a million people, and these are all colonies of, with people that don't like us. And you can see that you know there are people who have, you know, uh, Zoroastrian religion, so it exists. But in India, this is India here. Seventy-five percent of our population is like that, and you can see here, culture-wise, the only one that like go down Persian five percent. Um, Pashtun, 3.4%. These are accepted cultures. Pashtun, Uzbek. Uh, Azerbaijani is on the list. Etc, etc. So, like, uh, you can see here... Uh, this is our accepted cultures list, which is actually pretty big for a lot of people, but... Uh, the only reason I even put all these cultures on the list is because our... Non-accepted cultures list is so enormous that it would make it almost unplayable so and we also have a problem that is that you can see we have absolutely no craftsmen which are the people who work in the factories and very very few capitalists so yeah and 18 million farmers <laughs> uh, and a whole lot of useless fucking aristocrats <laughs> we don't even like those guys. I, I guess we do. Because we were still aristocratic. We had both of those things. Um, we start basically the Ottoman techs. Just moving straight on to technology. I want to save that for last, actually. So, something that has a direct correlation from population is politics. Now, we started with our Federalist Party. Which is our conservative party. And this is actually quite useful for us. Because they have a good economic policy for the start of the game. Protectionism uh, is their trade thing, which means we have a maximum tariff of 100%, but a minimum tariff of 25%. We can only um, have a certain amount, and that's in the budget. I'll go into that later. Interventionism gives us a bonus based on tax um, and, and things like that. Um, and it mostly what I want to see here is that we can uh, invest in factories invest in pop fact projects yes and that is very very nice for something like laissez-faire for example we cannot do that so it's nice that we start as the federalist rather than republicans now uh, i did a lot of the i guess fancy names for parties um but the federalists and the republicans i decided to leave as kind of a normal style thing i figured they're just two factions of the same group that overthrew the Karens. The Karens are here. Other ones will activate later on as, as the game goes on. We start pretty much with the same type of things as the United States does, except that we have slavery outlawed because... What, what are we, jerks? Uh, the first thing I'm actually going to do with this, though, is hold an election. Uh, because I like the elections a lot. I'm not going to activate them every time they come up, uh, but I want to do it. I want to start the game with one. As you can see, things pretty pretty closely match what people want, so I'm not I'm not worried about that. And here you can see the issues down here, what people are worried about. Jingoism's a big one, which is bad because that's a reactionary. Uh, moralism also bad because it's a reactionary. Most of these people are probably in India actually. Um, and everything else hovers from zero to five percent. Uh, and the voters don't necessarily have the same kind of things as the people do. For example, what's the biggest swing, I suppose? Yeah, like here, residency versus the people don't want residency. Because the people benefit more from the better um, things for them. Um, which are 
issues based on different types of, uh, I believe it is citizenship policy. We right now have limited citizenship, but for example, the Republicans have the full citizenship, whereas the Karen guys are only residency. So yeah, that's uh, it's important to note. I think we have, what's our voting rules? Minorities. Accepted cultures can vote, but not all vultures, not all cultures can vote. And I think we kind of want to keep it that way because it, uh, I think it affects the assimilation rate. We'll talk about that stuff later. We can't do any reforms right now because our people are pretty content with that. No movements. We'll talk about those when they pop up. Decisions. Now, every everybody who's con who has uh, researched the rights of man, which is Pretty much all of the civilized countries can do this at the beginning, and it gives you a bonus um, to prestige, and I guess that's supposed to be a malice of, of an increased pop consciousness. Consciousness is basically how good your separate groups are at organizing, and that's not necessarily bad. So we'll do that. You see a little modifier pops up here, and this will last until the end of the game or until we upgrade this. Actually, I think that just stays on top of that. Up here at the top, you can see our democracy type, or our, our government type. Election campaign in progress. For democracy, we have an election every four years, unless I, I triggered one. Um, our national value is liberty. Now, most of this stuff is just based on the United States, and this is one of the few things I changed from a default Ottoman or Persian thing that I think is actually a, a flat-out bonus to us. Your research points modifier plus 5%, and immigrant attraction plus 50%, but... As a penalty, we have increased needs for everybody, and we have more militancy for non-accepted cultures. I'm not, I think everything else started with order, so order I think is slightly better for controlling your population. Uh, but that's not really what we're about. Revanchism is um, getting land back, but we don't have any land that we need to claim reclaim since most of the people who have land that we used to own we gave to them I think all of it <laughs> I don't think we've lost a war since Crusader Kings 2 that actually lost this land if I ever did plurality is uh, related to consciousness and stuff like that um, it starts high because we're a democracy and because they're based on the United States I think it starts lower than the United States though uh, we were the first true liberal democracy uh, we started as a administrative republic when we did the thing when we did the revolution so um, I think it's uh, rather appropriate that we have the liberty uh, thing now other things that are also democracies but are not real democracies so show up like Amalfi they were a, a merchant or noble republic I don't remember but that counts as democracy to the game, so, uh, yeah. So politics-wise, I think that's all we can do. We can release nations as well, uh, as either satellites or dominions based on their, uh, their level of, uh, development, and ours also. Like, somebody who's a little bit, uh, higher in tech would release Afghanistan as a dominion rather than a, uh, than a satellite. Uh, so... And that's basically refers to their colonial status and things like that. So, for example, Greece is satellite because we own um, Cyprus, which is why you can release Greece. Because they're highly developed, while Gwalior is India in are behind us in tech. So they would be that. Uh, and you can also activate the decisions to release vassals, which I'm not going to do right now. And there's also other things we can do later. Um, so, yeah. What else? What's next? Hmm. And I'm going over these because they're important for our starting position. So that's holding an election here. And I just wanted to explain a little bit for people who are unfamiliar with this. Trade. Trade is something I'm basically going to automate. Uh, the capitalists, for the most part, and for us, for building state things, will buy these things on the free market. You can see the prices here, and the red arrow means that they're going down in price. The 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 uh, 
green arrow means they're going up in price, and you can see where they're from, and stuff like that. See, Vinland produces a lot of steel, um, and France produces a lot of machine parts, etc., etc. And you can see where these are from, and the, more more of these will pop up later as they're unlocked. Nobody's producing tanks right now, for example. So for the most part, I'll just going to automate it because uh, it's not really necessary to not automate it. And you can do that for individual things. For example, it's like I want I want to not automate steel, for example. Um, but I'm going to leave that alone because I, <laughs> like in most games, I'm not necessarily sure of all of the mechanics of trade. Now, something that's very important is diplomacy. Um, I only started with population because it was something I needed to discuss, but this is probably the most important thing at the beginning. Um, if we look at the great powers list, you'll see that everybody starts with basically nothing as far as relations goes, uh, and that's something I did deliberately. A lot of these countries don't even have any colonies. Spain has colonies. But nobody else does. I, I, guess, I guess Vinland does, but that's like parts of their country that are further away. Um, but nobody else has any has any colonies, and you, you can see that reflected by how well I thought they were doing war-wise, what their prestige value was, and stuff. Like Lancaster never even got the whole thing of England, so they don't get to have as much prestige as England. They don't have any colonies either, so they get 30 prestige. That's how much we have, actually. But they start with more because of tax and stuff like that. France starts with slightly less because they also don't control all of France and didn't have any colonies. But they start with more than England because they were doing more stuff. Fighting Spain, for example. Spain had a lot of colonies, and they were fighting lots of wars. They were number one in our, our EU4 game. But they're a little bit behind because, uh, well, they don't have very much industrial power. And Lancaster has all of it. <laughs> Which is fitting, being most of England. And I would not be surprised if you saw York on this list, because they start with a surprising amount of industrial power for only having one state. Um, that's not what I'm going to look at. What was it? Diplomacy. Um, and Vinland starts with a ridiculous amount for being what they are. And 31 is pretty ridiculous. I mean, pretty much everyone on this list, there's only there's only four people who beat him. Um, as far as industrial power. And they are very likely to be very high in the future. Um, so, we start with zero industrial power, which is on par with uh, Hungary, who's a great power. You can see we're actually number eight on the list, which means we're probably going to end up being a great power. There's lots of things you can do being a great power. We're considered a secondary power, which means we can actually colonize. Uh, but we have so much tied up in colonization that we can't do anything with that yet. We need text to do that. We'll talk about tech in a bit. So we have three military, we have three diplomatic points. And there's other things down here we can see. Crisis, uh, great power sphere things, and things like that. Colonial stuff that we can't do because we don't have power. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start improving our relations with those around us. We basically started with a clean slate. So there's two things that I would think would be, well, I guess three. Egypt, Zoro Pope, and the Immortals. And that's actually the, the Atash Waharan. But I'll pretty much always call it the Zoro Pope. <laughs> I didn't want to call it that, like, actually give that the official name because it's kind of a silly, stupid name. I look at the Immortals, they pretty much only have non-colonies on this stuff over here. Um, and that basically reflects the civilization level sort of thing. So, don't think of that as, as them not living there. It's the fact that they were, like, basically church nomads. <laughs> who just own a lot of stuff. But, uh, yeah. So... Uh, I think the Zoro Pope, even though they're they're technically weaker than the Immortals, or who I want to talk to. The Immortals actually start with higher relations. Um, and as you can see, nobody will give relations with us because they have insufficient relations, which is minus one thousand percent. I think as a relic of 
England? We actually start with a high relations with Lancaster. But I'm going to ignore that for now. They actually probably would allow, ally with us. But I'm not going to do that. Um, if it was Ireland or France, do we start with a high relations with Ireland? I forgot if I did that. Yeah. It could have got us in trouble with England, though. Uh, let's not do that. Let's focus on people around us. So I think the Zoro Pope, because they start with pretty highly advanced land and stuff like that, uh, we will we will throw in a lot with them, even though we start pretty low. And that costs two of our points. We have one left over. You can get more points over time later by having different techs. So. I want to talk about technology last because that's a pretty big decision. Let's go to budget. So, budget. Budget is something that will greatly affect your populations and your country's um, prosperity. And the very first thing I want to do is I want to raise my administration up as high as it can go. Now you'll notice that there's these red bars here, and these are based these are limitations based on our ruling party. For example, we can't have a lower certain amount of of land units, can't have below a certain amount of mil military spending, can't have, uh, subsidize tariffs that much, etc. Um, we can't have zero tax on our rich people, which is something we want to do, but that's the minimum amount because of our our government's like, no, we can't do that. We do want to raise the tax on our poor people, though, and the reason I'm doing this is because it makes the poor people look for more high, higher paying jobs. For farmers, for example, they might convert to craftsmen or soldiers, which are cost more, which pay more money. Uh, or artisans might convert into bureaucrats, for example, because I'm focusing on administration, I'm paying them more money, so the artisans might switch to that. Um, and I want to raise my education gradually, but as you can see, I'm going to lose quite a bit of money. I think I can actually put it up 100% right now. But I think I want to switch things around a little bit later. I'm going to leave my middle class taxes where they are. Because middle class is kind of a hard thing to get people to do. So I figure if I leave the taxes where they are, and if I lower them, I'll, I'll start... Well, I don't want to lose money. Hmm. But I don't necessarily need... I want them to stay where they are, basically. Um... So we want to focus on the rich people and <laughs> and and shit on the poor people. And they're like, hey, Fly McGuffin, I thought you were going to be a cool bro who doesn't like slavery and is all democratic. Yes, but that actually helps the poor people. Uh, and that's not really a joke. Uh, if I if I make them have no taxes, they will be content with their, with their lot in life. And I don't want them to do that. I want them to be cool bros who want cool jobs. So they want to make more money. And so they want to uh, switch to the jobs that I want them to do as their horrible overlord. So since we're still making money right now, uh, and the reason we're making a shitload of money is because we have a lot of valuable resources. A lot. And a lot of people to tax. So we're in a pretty good situation money-wise. I mean, that's, that's our big bonus right there. So, relation to that sort of thing, we want to set some natural foci. Which is uh, something we can do in the news over here. So one of the things you want to do is you always want to go to your capital. Set a focus on capital. We have two at the moment. Um, and I think they changed that from technology based on your population, I think? I don't know. The pop demand mod did something with this later uh, when I was uh, doing it before. So one of the things you can do is you can promote a various types of uh, populations, or you can promote various types of things, industries, consumer goods, military, things like that. Or you can even focus towards parties if you wanted to have a specific party in power. Now what I want to do in Baghdad is I want to focus on capitalists. And then I want to find a, a high population accepted culture thing. So Pashtunistan, for example. We can make that our... Which is over here. We can make this into our um, place that people do stuff. So we will have this being focused on basic industry. Which is very, very, very important. 
we need that for other stuff. So this this is going to be our rust belt over here. Which is good. Um, as a Midwesterner, that has negative connotations, however. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's an appropriate thing uh, to call that. So, next we have military. Now, this costs money. Um... One of the things I want to focus on here is I need to get some regulars, and I need to get some artillery. And I only want to build units in Asia at the moment. So let's build all of the things we can with regulars, and then all of the things we can with artillery. Okay. And then see, we have a lot of Uzbek here we can do. So let's get another set of artillery, another set of regulars. And we can build cavalry as other types. Maybe dragoons can't. Yeah, dragoons can't. So let's get two sets of dragoons and then some more artillery. And then max this out with regulars. Now we can build another type of artillery that's not nearly as good. Um, no, not nearly as much as attack or defense or discipline. It is pretty garbage. Um, but if you need to have artillery, you can do that, since you can only build artillery with your accepted cultures. Now, your non-accepted cultures, you can build irregulars, or actually you can build infantry, which are less bad. That's fine. And you can see we'd look at Punjab, Kashmiri, things like that. And these are all in places that are not places that are cool with us. So... I can actually build some Dutch infantry, because apparently I forgot to change the Dutch pops in India, or uh, whatever that place is. I don't care. It's fine. There's so few of them that it doesn't matter. They just happen to be soldiers. So I actually don't want to do anything with those. Um, I might build some of these guys. They build very quickly, though. If I wanted to build normal infantry, it would only take 20 days. So if I need them, I could build them. So, I'm building 43 units right now. Another option we could do is we could build a navy. I don't want to do that. They're super expensive in the beginning of the game. Especially to buy and maintain them. Well, actually, one of the first things I do as a normal country, unless I'm playing as England, is to spend all my boats. And I believe in my... 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 Uh, my... Breton Empire game, I actually disbanded my boats too. Which I was playing as England. Basically. So the last thing we have here, well, the last thing we have here that actually requires a significant choice here is technology. Now, there are two technologies that stand out as being very important. However, we don't start with one of them. If we start with basic chemistry, then one of the things you want to get is medicine right away. Because medicine has a lot of really good stuff. Which means we probably want to get uh, basic chemistry pretty soon. Uh, other ones that are really good are some of these things here. Um, army, I think we can hold off on for a while. But one of the ones we want to get is... Uh, which one is it? Bolt action rifles? Yeah, bolt action rifles. Which one's one is the one that uh, allows the... Conf uh, allows guards one of these guards are basically upgraded infantry they're like elite troops and you want to get that but we're not doing that right now and we're gonna be wanting to do this cuz we didn't even make boats so yeah because we're the Ottomans apparently the Ottomans don't know how to make boats so uh, idealism is a straight bonus to research points. We start pretty far behind, so we are going to want to focus on getting our research points as high as we can. However, this does not unlock for four years. The next best one, I think, would be for uh, Malthusian Thought, which increases our colonial points, which we need. We need a lot. But it also increases our education efficiency, which is good for raising our literacy, which is also increases our tech rate. So we're going to start with Malthusian Slot, and then after that's finished, we're not going to do anything until Idealism unlocks. And it saves all your tech points. So that'll let us maybe do a little bit with colonial stuff. 
and then we'll be getting positivism and stuff like that later. Ideological thoughts, also a good one. Gives us another national focus. It also unlocks changing our ideology if we wanted to do so. So, yeah, we'll do that now. And we start with our administration's military industrial complex, which gives us a bonus to army tech, a penalty to navy and culture tech, which means you're taking a penalty to this right now, and a bonus to industry tech. This is technically very good, but it's pretty bad for me right now because I'm getting minus 10 to the text I want to focus on but that's all right that's all right I think the one that I would really benefit from right now is uh, avant-garde whatever it's called where we get a bonus to culture hmm production okay ah they are starting a project so uh, our capitalists will say okay I want to build a printing press in Baghdad and we're going to start investing in this. And this, this number of investors will go up based on how many people want to do that. And they'll slowly build up money to buy these goods that they need to to do this. So they need a certain amount of money and a certain amount of, of stuff built up, which they will buy with these funds. But what we can do is we can say, oh, look at this. We can click this, and this is something we can do because of our, our, our current government. Let's say we have 135,000 pounds, which is the currency of the game and say we can invest however much we want into that. We can invest all of it. We can just click the max button if you wanted to. And then we'll have 124,000 pounds. And then it'll automatically finish the factory. And then it will acquire all these resources and stuff like that. So there's nothing we can do right there right now. This over here is the newspaper. Um, those won't pop up in, until a minute here. And this will show us uh, different stuff, battle plan editors and things like that. I'm probably not going to mess with that too much. Now the outliner here will show us the different uh, things that we're doing right now. We're building a bunch of guys. We actually have to buy the, the supplies they need and then give it to the um, the pops and then they'll start building then. These are current armies and then our national focus. Uh, each of them are, are put in different places. So another thing I want to do is build a, build a couple other things before I start the game. I want to build some naval bases. Let's build one in Basra. Let's build one in... And you can only have one naval base in a state. Let's build one in... In Beirut, I guess. I'm going to have at least one in the Mediterranean. And I don't want it to be in Cyprus. So I'll build it here. You're going to be in a pretty big population center. I also want one in Celion. I think Colombo has the highest population. Yeah. So we'll build that here. Now we can't build railroads because we don't have the text. We can build forts. And building forts is a good idea in places that are uh, kind of outlying places. But it's more expensive to do that because they're farther away. But I'll do that in each of these places over here. And... Build one over here. You can see I didn't change where most of the units were. I'll just leave that. That's fine. They'll eventually get out of there. Uh, also build... Hmm. There's a colony down here. I'll build a naval base here and in Zanzibar. Now this will take some time. Because uh, it's very expensive to do that. It takes a lot of resources. So you're going to notice that these numbers aren't going down. They take a long time to finish. Okay, so let's get, actually get started.